All right, it's 1045 and I only get you guys for an hour and if truth be told, I could literally do a four to six hours session on this because I love talking about this. Uh, first of all, have you guys enjoyed the conference? That's been amazing, right? Uh, anybody feel that energy psyched up, totally ready to go back and start implementing something that you learned here? I get that feeling every year that I come to this conference. I'm going to encourage everybody, take it back and don't let it burn out. Keep it going. Grab a hold of a couple people, start a new mini game, anything like that. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. I love coming down here and getting recharged. Did anybody see Rich playing the guitar? Okay. I'm going to be honest here. I was sitting right there, like watching it and everything, and then I had realized until they announced him, I did not know that was Rich. I knew Rich had something to do with it, but I did not realize he was actually in the band, and it blew me away because I've never seen him outside of a coat and stuff like that, but really exciting. So who am I, where do I come from, why am I here? As you can see up here, my name is Will Ham. I am the operations trainer for Blue Sky Restoration. We are a company that's about 1,300 employees, uh, 50 locations spread throughout the United States. We plan on doubling that in about four years, so we'll be about 100 locations, upwards to three to 4,000 people. And then you'll see in parentheses here, Mineld. So last year, down here at the conference, Mineld Construction Restoration. We've been playing the game for about 12 years. I've been playing for five years. Uh, we were able to accept an All-Star Award last September. Super exciting, it was absolutely amazing. Went home a month later, they come in and told me, you're no longer mental construction restoration, we have been bought out, you are blue sky restoration. And I went, okay. And the first question out of my mouth is, is I said, what about the great game of business? And my CFO knew how passionate I was about it. And he says, well, uh, we need to have a conversation. Long story short, my company right now currently is not playing the game. We're looking into it, having some conversations. So I have whole hope and faith that we're gonna get there and I'm gonna do everything in my power. So in return, when you take something away from me, I grab a hold of it harder and I dive deeper. So what that meant is I was down here last year looking for what's that next move that I can take the game home into my personal life. And be careful what you wish for because everything completely changed. I was no longer being paid weekly. I went to salary. I'm getting paid bi-weekly. Everything changed. So I had to re-amp everything, my scoreboard, my mini games, my long-term goals, and change everything, which was good. But it was an adjustment period. So today, it's one of those situations where I get to come down here today. And Jack talked last yesterday about you'll have that aha moment. I had an aha moment last night. I was out to dinner with a few people that I had met, and he gave me a brilliant idea of how I can take this game towards something that's been a fear of mine in my life, but something that I want to achieve, and that's educational side to continue to grow on that. So stay tuned. Uh, who's the first, any first timers here at the conference? Man, that's awesome. You all have to make me a promise. We're gonna see each other here next year. Come back. Come walk up to me, say, hey, Will, told you I'd be back. I promise you guys I'm going to do everything in my power to be back here because this is a huge part of my life. We call it the great game of business. For me, I took my scoreboard. It's titled the GGOL. It's a great game of living. The game is not became, it's become a way of living for me to an extreme where I find myself at Walmart shopping and I'm, I need salt and pepper. And then I start thinking about, how often do I buy salt and pepper? And then it goes, well, how much money am I spending a year in salt and pepper? How much am I gonna spend through a lifetime? And I'm sitting there with my calculator at Walmart, people are looking at me like I'm crazy. And I did the math and I found out that I could save $200 in a lifetime if I quit buying salt. I like pepper, so I decided I'm no longer gonna buy salt. My doctor's been telling me for three years, quit doing salt. But until I put it in the great game of business, I was like, well, this is easy. I have used the game to quit smoking, to change my finances, to get debt free. I have used the game in multiple different ways this year, and we'll talk a little bit about last April, this April, I applied it towards health. I had a goal, I took an office job, no longer in the field, started eating a lot of, <laughs> well, that looks good, sitting in a chair and realized that I was walking about a mile a day and the pounds started packing on. And I used the game to set goals and benchmarks and made a little mini game with myself, and I'll talk a little more about that. But there's so many different things. 
um, what was her name? Logan, maybe? They just did the PTO for a critical number. Oh, that was awesome. That was beautiful, because I'm one of those guys that never uses PTO. So anyhow, that's a little bit of story about me. I come from the front lines, uh, still have a huge passion for the front lines and want to help them out. You all remember the spaz out thing that we did yesterday? OK. So 30 seconds a piece. We're going to go around the room real quick. Name, hometown, company, and GGOB experience. And then if you don't do it in 30 seconds, everybody's going to yell spaz out. <laughs> We're going to start here. Ready? Wow, awesome. Uh, I'm Dave Lidico from Smithville, Missouri, Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, company at Cineva Company, and we've been doing this for about two or three years now. Awesome. 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 So glad you're here. Awesome. Brian Yost, I'm from Nazareth, Pennsylvania. My company is Kitchen Magic. We do kitchen renovations primarily. Um, they've been playing the game since 2017, but really have you know, kind of put a refresher in starting the game this year. And I've been with the company for just over a year or so. Awesome.
Thank you. You, 30 seconds, name, hometown, company, how long have you been playing GGOB or experience with it? That's awesome, man. We've got a big, diverse crowd here from 10 years to first year and a lot of first time attendees. So kudos to you guys and thank you for showing up because I need your help as much as what I've got to offer, I learned from you guys. So this is very interactive. If you've got a question, comment, throw it out there. Uh, if I catch you off, no worries, hang out afterwards. I will stick around as long as anybody needs to to talk further, but we only get an hour, so I wanna jump right into it. Some of the GGOB basics. Uh, everybody here have a copy of the book? Okay, so this is all basic stuff of this. Just wanted to kind of let you guys see this and think, get us in the mindset as we go through this and knowing what we know in the professional side, the business side, and as we head into the personal life. Uh, one of the questions yesterday was, what can we do with, you know, people are at work for one third of their time and then two thirds are at home. What can we do to help encourage that? This goes for all of us, whether it's PTO and some of the things that we can talk about here today to think about. Okay, so some of you, had just started playing, have been playing for a long time. Some of you are maybe getting ready to start playing. I put this question up here because I remember what I felt like when I first heard about the GGOB and my beliefs. And I remember my first design huddle. I remember seeing that first scorecard and thinking, I don't belong here. That is way above my pay grade. I don't understand it. And then think about some of the fears or thoughts when you started playing the game or if you're getting ready. And that's just something I want you guys to kind of think about as we head into how can we implement this in our personal life. For me, education and continue to do my education degrees. It's a huge fear of mine, I'm scared to death. I don't think I can do it. Somebody spun it around in principle last night of the game and I thought to myself, he said two things and I'm like, I make it a game and now I'm excited about it and I have a starting point. So these, if there's something in your life whether it's finances, uh, PTO, and different things that we're gonna talk about, determine a critical number. What is a critical number to you guys? Not for a company, we're looking at our personal lives and think about it, is there something in your life that just like, uh, it, it's important, but it's really not important. It's one of those things that it's important when it's a problem and how we can address that and bring attention to it. Uh, what's some critical numbers tossed out that you guys are using currently in your company? Profit, gross margin. Anybody using PTO yet? <laughs> oh, I like that one. I'm gonna turn that into a department game for my team because none of us take PTO. And even when we're on PTO, we're like, hey, my boss is like, you're on PTO. In fact, my boss called me two weeks ago and says, are you not taking any PTO? And I'm like, why? He's like, have you looked at your hours? And I'm like, no, why? He's like, you need to take some. I was like, okay. Uh, and then think about why it's a critical number. You know, a lot of folks, whether it's profit, cash, PTO, there's a reason we've made it a critical number because it's highly important to the company to succeed. No difference in our life. For me, uh, health has become one for me. I have a retirement plan now. I would like to be able to live long enough to enjoy retirement and the life that I was living years ago with eating and smoking and just running ragged, not sleeping and everything. So. That is always, that's been my critical number here lately. And then I'll talk about kind of a new critical number I've implemented. And then how can we define a critical num number for home? So think about some ideas for critical numbers. Uh, do I have a volunteer that wants to write down a list? Yeah, you write down a list, you got a piece of paper? I thought maybe they would have a little whiteboard here. So I'm gonna kick you guys off. These are some of the critical numbers or things that I've designed mini games around just to get the juices flowing and think about things. And then if anybody else has got someone, a different one that you think of, throw it out there. Let's get creative and find some ideas with this. You don't have to have a pen. I sure do. <laughs> okay, this is a very special pen because it's a number 10. Okay. I don't know, I don't know what that means, but that's what everybody tells me. I'll make sure it gets back to you. I got a hundred of them, you're good. So you got an idea for a critical number, Sean? Uh, like family time. Whew. That's a huge perspective. Uh, I had a gentleman call me yesterday. I'm working, mentoring a guy out of Dallas, Texas. 
and he proceeded to tell me that he hasn't been home in like 36 hours because they had two major losses. And he had PTO scheduled and he went to work. And he was pretty upset and I said, uh, ironically, his name's Will too, funny. I said, Will, I said, I need you to do me a favor. I said, tonight when you go home and you shut that van door, I said, I want you to just stop and put your hand on the side of the mirror and leave all your work troubles, all your problems, shut that work phone off and go inside. He's got two kids and a beautiful wife. I said, spend that time and I appreciate your effort and dedication to work, but take that amount of energy and put it into your family. I love that, Sean, that's a great idea. Anybody else have other ones? Throw them out there. defining health even further down and get specific with it. Like that is truly, mental health is a serious thing, especially since the pandemic. I know for me personally, I've been remote and I live alone in my house. And I went three days without even going outside and I had to tell my boss, I'm like, I haven't even left my house and seen daylight yet. And it's just, and I didn't realize that it wasn't intentionally, I just happened and it was one of those things. I love that one, great idea. John, anybody? So the sky's the limit, great one, I love it. And that's something to just thinking outside of the box. And uh, if you guys come up with one down the road and you think this is great, I've got some of my cards up here. I wanna make sure y'all get one. Shoot me an email and be like, hey, what do you think about this? I'm like, yeah, I love it. Cause I wanna take it and I wanna try it. I'm all about trying to find new ways. And it ne don't necessarily have to be my critical number at the time. It could be something I could create a mini game around. And uh, the critical, I have, different critical numbers because I'm playing long-term. You know, we talk about long-term planning and goals. So I have several on here right now, health, house loan, uh, future pay, 401k, credit score, different things, vacation. I, I have a vacation fund. I love taking vacations, but I don't take PTO. Like I'll take like a Friday and a Monday off and do a weekend vacation. So it's one of those things I love. One of the slides the lady put up earlier was taking two weeks off and traveling the country. I'm like, I wanna do that. I have the time, but I just, I'm afraid something, won't ha something will happen when I'm gone or they'll need me and that's not true. So just something to think about for critical numbers. Uh, mini games. This is your basic mini game stuff, which I have folders with the gig tools on the GGOB. All this stuff is in these folders here with this information. I hope I have enough. If not, I will get your information and send it to you. But thinking about building a mini game around whatever it may be. Maybe it's tie into your critical number. Maybe it's just something personally that you want to do. So my health one that I did here, I was telling the gentleman that does all of our recording for us is from up in Wisconsin by the Dells. I was up there last April. In taking this job, I started eating everything and I really started gaining weight and I just did not really like myself. I wasn't sleeping right, this and that. And I've always struggled with diets and exercise and all this stuff. So I created a mini game. And all it takes is a little competition because we had scheduled a trip with three of my high school buddies that I haven't seen in about 20 years. And we were gonna go play like 36 holes of golf and go whitewater rafting in the Coe River in Tennessee. So my mindset went to, I'm the oldest out of all of us. And when I show up down there, I wanna be in the best shape. I wanna be able to out golf them, out wrap them, out everything. And I was, I, in that amount of time through playing the game and forecasting how much I needed to exercise, how many calories I needed to eat a day, I was able to meet that goal. I fell a little short, but I was able to drop 18 pounds from April, April till July just by knowing where I was at, because I started paying attention to what I was eating. I was using my Apple Watch, and I was like, oh, I gotta get so many steps a day. You know, I went from walking 2,000 steps a day to I'm averaging 16,000 steps today, just because I started forecasting it and keeping track of it and made it a game. And now it's like, Phew, what else can I do? Can I go for a mountain bike ride? Can I, I'm slowly trying to run. Running's difficult for me. Uh, so think about some different ideas with the mini games. These are just some key points to get a mini game started. I've got all the documents up here, the mini game checklist and everything. And how many of y'all have families? Okay. 
What's Jack always say? People support what they help create. I have a uh, good friend of mine. She is a dedicated mom and works her tail. Being a mom is a full-time job. Being a parent is a full-time job. And I've been working with her and her children are young. There's one that's struggling with behaving in class and stuff. So we're working right now, building a little mini game. Uh, she has the youngest one will use the broom and she has a tile floor and he'll sweep everything into the square. And then she's working on a point system and a scoreboard. And one of the rewards is we'll go to trampoline place, jump park. I don't know what those things are called. Elevate maybe. Uh, and then different ones, and then there's like a water park day. So she's taken some of the principles that I've learned and just openly discussed, and she's starting to use them with her family. But she's sitting down and letting the kids help color the scoreboard and different thing and design their own little game piece so they understand it. So bring the family in on it. When you guys talk about, there's forms up here for your critical numbers, talk about what's important. Maybe it's a family vacation. I feel like my parents didn't take family vacations as a kid. That's probably why I try to take so many vacations today, because I'm trying to make up for all the ones I didn't get. But I think family vacations are extremely important to our health, our mental health, and to our careers, to everything, to be able to just go out and enjoy that. And when I take vacation, I feel a lot better going into the vacation knowing that I have this money for fuel, this money for hotel, this money for food, and then I have my I'm gonna do whatever budget that I usually try to juice up real good before I go out on vacation. Because then if I see something and I want it, I, I'm able to get it. I don't like to purchase things and try to figure out how to pay for it. I like to think about things that I wanna do or I may need or want and get the money up front. And then just set up a system of how's that look, how many weeks is it gonna take, paychecks and different things like that. So a few little examples. Uh, these are mini games that we just finished up with our company right before we were uh, bought out. This one was we were having trouble with on call. We were a 24 seven available restoration company. So trying to find technicians to help out when water losses come in and be on call and everything, we were struggling with that. So we created a game. Fortunately, I don't know if y'all can tell, but that head that's on that surfer, my marketing gal had a little fun and I did not know that that was getting inserted. That's my head on that surfer. Uh, but we did an ocean theme, life's a beach, seize the day. And then we used the word one because we wanted to bring people united together. And it was a simple that if you went and helped somebody during the week after hours, you got to move one space. You would fill out a card who you helped and the job information and you would move your space. If you help somebody on the weekend, you would move two spaces. Then we had three levels of winning. So the O was level one, the N two, E three. And like if you got to one, I think it was like a case of energy drink and a set of, uh, I don't remember what the other thing was. And then like the N was Apple uh, earbuds and your favorite, a case of your favorite beverage. And then like the E was an Apple watch tagging along with something else. So it was one of those things that it really engaged. And this was probably only in the first, oh, three weeks of playing the game. And we were doing it for 90 days. So it's one of those simple things, getting kids to, uh, I, here's one. Somebody, I tell you what, y'all can create something to a mini game to keep children off of technology. Let me know. I've got two nephews that never leave their Xbox. If y'all figure out a mini game for that, please send that to me. Uh, I would love to find a way to get them off of <laughs> their Xboxes. Social media, yeah. Facebook, Social media. Uh, how many people, t TikTok, is that what it's called, TikTok? Obviously I don't TikTok, uh, but that's a huge thing and I'm, you know, social media was a big one for me. Uh, I've really tried to, that's something I need to look at because when I'm bored, Facebook is so easy or LinkedIn or whatever it is. And that's time that I could be reading a book further in myself in education. So thank you. And then this one here was back when we were mentaled. Uh, our critical number was always gross profit. But what was happening is, as Jack always says, don't ever run out of cash. Our AR days were ridiculous. We had a lot of money out there that wasn't collected. So this lady at our office put a team together and they created this game. 
and this was a uh, collecting cash game. And I kid you not, we had business development, project managers, superintendents, frontline technicians that were collecting deductibles, that were driving out of their way on the way home to pick up a check. And we ended up collecting, I wanna say, it was like 3.2 million in 90 days for our company. And then everybody got an individual prize and there was a big cookout party for collecting that. And it was just, it was a game and we scored it. Everybody was, we had teams and everybody on those teams were rallying together and just, you know, it was a competition. Oh, picked up another check as they're walking into the office and it, it became fun and people loved it. So you could do that with family, especially if you got teenage boys or girls, tell me they don't love to compete against each other. All you gotta do is make it competitive and before you know it, it they're no longer looking at the fact that I mowed the grass in 30 minutes, you mowed it in 40, beat you. They're no longer looking at the things as that. It's a competition. That's what I love about this. Uh, and then let's just kind of think about and talk about some ideas. What do you guys think some ideas are for mini games at home? without saying anything? Exactly. That would be even better. Love it. Like, one point if you take it out when I ask you, two points if you just take it out. That, there we go. Now we're going to yeah. Love that. I stole this one from one of my clients, but uh, getting my daughter to practice violin. You know, first month is practice violin two times a week. Second month is three times a week. Third, time, third month is four times a week. But that, and again, it's that long-term habit. So now... That is brilliant. And how's things going? How long have you did? Or it still has it become a like just part of the routine now? Yeah, summers are hard, and that's actually something that I think we should all think about. Is in behavioral therapy, there's a booster, right? So doing a one month mini game, hmm. the same mini game like a year later, just for a month as a booster, can really uh, have an effect. Giving them something to look forward to that's tied to a season doing it for a month, but doing it yearly. So they know, mom, are we gonna do that game? You know, and looking forward to it. And now you're building that over time. And then before you know it, you've got six or eight mini games that you've already developed that are just like pulling a board game off of the shelf and you have a season. Think about it, you did them just around the holidays, Christmas, Halloween, Thanksgiving. I could, you could get creative with the themes of the season, Sean. And it instills routine for you to where I get that. Yeah, because it's not a, it's not cheap. I looked into it to like, can I just have somebody come clean my house? So I used I used to have somebody clean my house. I used to have somebody buy my groceries, especially when the pandemic came in. And then I realized I'm like, you're lazy, and you're wasting a lot of money. <laughs> Great idea. Any other ideas on mini games? Why is that? Why it's like we wash it, we dry it, fold it, and the hardest part is the easiest part. It's good enough. You know, I I travel a lot, and I don't know how to pack because every time I pack, I'm on a two-week road trip that started Wednesday coming down here, and all my clothes I pulled them, and I'm like, I look like I just rolled out of bed and going to this, and I'm not real. Talented with an iron, may have set off some smoke alarms because I'm like squirrel. I, I tell everybody my spirit animal is a squirrel in the middle of the road. I don't know which way I'm going. I'm just all over the place. Did you have an idea on a minigame? Yeah, I had a different one. Uh, we're a pretty religious family, and uh, think about minigames possibly being like a family activity. Like, you know, we're going to have to get together and play some minigames. Just work, but it's good. Yeah, they've got those uh, kind of simplifying it, making it a little more fun, because they've got read the Bible in a year, different programs that you can do. I love that. That's, 
Man, you guys have got, are you getting all these? Okay, you're awesome. I have to give you some kind of reward. You're doing a great job. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else think of something fun, exciting? Something to think about. We're going to keep plugging on. If you have another one, feel free to raise your hand. Uh, now what I want to do is spend some time of walking through kind of what I use for a scoreboard and a scorecard to track everything. Uh, oh, we're going to get into the actual one. This uh, Excel. How many people are Excel savvy, Google Sheets? OK. So y'all are way ahead of me when I started. I was telling the guys earlier, everybody said, just enter a formula. I'm like, cool. Don't know what that is. <laughs> Don't know how to do it. And then it's funny because our company has an LMS that has over 1,100 courses in there. It wouldn't you know there was five different classes on how to use Excel. So I'm slowly learning it, but I like simple. I remember our scoreboard at Menolds was intense. Like it had a lot of colors, a lot of moving parts and things that I didn't understand. And I think I had to set in a design huddle for about two years before I fully understood each line item on there uh, and what it meant through there. So I'm gonna switch gears here real quick. I'm gonna move this so I don't spill water all over my work computer and have to explain to my boss why this conference cost me an extra money because I ruined my computer. Do, 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 do. Okay. So I told you guys health. This is, uh, this is a template I copied and pasted early on when I was playing the game to prepare for this. So you can see here, this is just a basic Excel sheet. Pretty simple. But you can notice I'm tracking steps per day, miles, calories, how much water. Because believe it or not, I love Diet Dr. Pepper. And I realized that maybe the reason I feel so uh is because I'm not drinking enough water. So I set goals on how much water I was going to drink. Carbs, protein, sugar. A lot of this all came out of, I use this app, I don't even know what it's called, uh, where I can scan all my barcodes and everything in it, and it tracks all these things for me. So all I have to do is pull up that app and transfer the information into this Excel spreadsheet. Daily weight, I've tracked and to see the trend on this. And then I like to mountain bike. I had this, I want to be a kid again. And I went and bought a mountain bike. Yeah, I'm a kid, all right. But it just, I, I want to chase that childhood dream. But the problem is, is that's a workout. And when you wipe out, it takes a lot longer to heal <laughs> than when I was a kid. So, and then sleep. I am a uh, 100 miles an hour nonstop wide open all the time. And I realized I was averaging about four to five hours of sleep. A lot of that was due to my caffeine intake. So I looked at that and thought, well, maybe you should not take caffeine after two o'clock in the afternoon. And then I started picking up. And I have found like six to seven, I functioned pretty well down to there. So I started tracking these things. And I was reading uh, Talent Development Magazine was talking about the three things, three most important things when it comes to my mental health. And that was my diet, my exercise, and my sleeping. And I was like, wow, those are things that I'm looking at. And it's amazing how much better I feel when I eat right, do a little bit of exercise. And guys, I started small. I set with, I'm just going to walk a mile a day. And then I said, you know what? Miles not that bad. I'm going to walk three miles a day. I can tell you this right now, I'm five miles a day. Like it's nothing. It doesn't bother me. I enjoy it thoroughly. We have a nice park right outside my house that I'm able to go to. And then I love to hike. Uh, one of the mini games that I'm playing with another buddy of mine who works at the same company, he's like 6'6", very tall. He ran Boston last year, so he's in shape. We go hiking all the time, and when I started hiking back in January, like at seven miles in, um, oh, dude, I said, you may have to carry me out of here. So that was part of the things is like, I want to be able to enjoy hiking. So we've set a goal next year, and we've been training. We hike about twice a month. And now when we hike, we do 15 miles, 3,000 to 4,000 feet elevation gain in just under four hours. We do time trials. And the reason is, is because our big goal is next year, we're still working out the details. We're going to drive to the North Rim, the Grand Canyon. We're going to hike north to south. We're going to spend the night in the hotel, get up the next day, and hike south to north. Now, that is uh, 22, 23 miles. 
Uh, from north to south, the problem is, is I think it's the last three miles is 5,000 feet elevation gain. So it's intense and I knew it was gonna take some dedication, but he's done it before, so I feel a little bit better. I got somebody there pushing me and guiding me, but that's just one of those things of where, so now I log like the miles and like my longest elevation or the longest hike, the, lo the highest elevation gain, just ways that I can track that and kind of look at knowing what pace I need to be able to walk and how many hours I need to be able to do. And then also with eating and sleeping, it all ties together to be able to say. So I'm hoping next year I can come here and be like, I did it, or I could be like, I was the guy that was uh, helicoptered out of the Grand Canyon last year. So stay tuned. So you could see any questions or thoughts or anything else you guys see on here, maybe would be, we could add to it. That's exciting. So it's a whole mini game, and we also learned stuff about our company, heritage. Yeah, and you could do that with the family, with the kids and stuff like that. I, the kids <clears throat> burning in a tree, like, hey, why don't you go run a mile for the family today? You know, in different ways. Great idea. Adding through here. So you can see down here at the bottom, I've got tabs. This here uh, is kind of a template one here. But I'm going to go into a basic, oh, that looks terrible, finances. Let's see if I can fix this one and kind of guide through that. How's that look? So these are some numbers that I just put together. And what I did is I based this off of a single person that just says makes $35,000 a year or a couple together makes a combined $70,000 a year. I just threw some numbers together to build uh, kind of a layout of all this and how this could work. So you can see this here. This is what I refer to as my checkbook ledger. This is what keeps updated. I have an online banking account, and this is where everything plugs in. So I have different, mine are different than these, but I have exactly how much money is set out, and we'll get into it down here with this. But I just threw some things on here that I thought, a safety net is crucial to me. Uh, daycare, car repair, different things. So one of the things that I do when I work with other people we sit down and they open their book to me and we talk about it and we, I ask them, I said, where do you spend money? I had this young kid that's 22 that works with us and he wanted to learn more about the game and implement it in his life. And he's like, I said, what do you spend money on? And he's like, well, these are the bills. And he started going through everything. I said, okay, now that we've got all your fixed costs going on, what do you like to do? I like to hang out with my friends. I said, great, where do you hang out with them at? Well, the bar. I said, okay, great. I said, totally fine. I said, how much money do you spend at the bar? Well, I don't know. I said, well, let's set a budget for that. If that's something that you enjoy doing, let's create a budget. So we set a budget, $50 for the weekend. He said, I can do $50 a weekend. About three weeks later, he called me. He says, well, that's not working. I said, what, what happened? He said, well, I took $50, but I also took my debit card with me. I woke up. By the end of the weekend, I had spent $300. I said, well, here's an idea. I said, leave your debit card at home. He said, oh, that's a great idea. And he tried it, and he realized he needed to adjust that budget a little bit, and he's made some changes in that, and it's been exciting to see. But when you sit down with somebody else, uh, here's one of the biggest things. I was without knowledge. I did not understand some of the things, and when people spoke in my company about, you have a 401k, and we're gonna match you up to 3%. Nobody ever took time to explain to me what that meant. I was just like, cool. A lot of these guys I talked to, I said, what are you doing for retirement? I don't know, they handle that. I said, how much are you putting in? Nothing. I said, you are leaving money on the table. And when you explain that to them and say, 3%, if you only, you're 22, 23 years old and you only put 3% in and your company's gonna match you up to two and a half, whatever it may be. <laughs> Boy, I wish I'd have started that when I was at his age. I said, you'll be fine. And you see the light bulb click on. And that's something else that I've made part of my games and my goals is when I get a raise or anything changes, I keep my cost of living exactly the same. Every raise or anything that happens all goes either 50% into savings, 50% into retirement. Most of the time I adjust my percentage of what I'm putting into my 401k and I keep my cost of living the same. And I act like I never even got a raise. And it's done wonders for me. 
So you can just see these are some basic breakdowns of how to track my daily costs or my weekly costs. This, is, uh, this one's set up bi-weekly, so over here I have the categories just to get an idea of plugging numbers in. How much a month do I spend on trash? Uh, how much do I spend on fuel, groceries, different things like this, car repair, and I just threw some numbers out there to fill in. I don't really know, probably an accurate reading of this. I do bi-weekly and then I do monthly to kind of get an idea of where I'm at and what's going on. And then over here, I have a savings account that I threw some numbers in and started looking at, well, how much money can I save in a pay period? What does that look like in three months? What's that look like in six months? Guys, when I started playing the great game of business five years ago, I could not keep $100 in my savings account for a longer than a month at a time. And one of the biggest goals and dreams that I'm doing right now is three months ago, I set a goal for myself and started looking at, I'm already taking care of my credit score, I'm taking care of my savings, this and that, and I'm getting ready to relocate the first of the year and become a homeowner. And I started creating a game and a system around that of everything, What's, what am I gonna need for a credit store? What am I gonna need to put 10% down? What's moving costs gonna be? And right now I am on track that the first of the year I will have enough money to handle and do and purchase everything for a home in Tennessee and still have three to four months of prudent reserve in my savings. That is because of the great game of business and these principles and making a game and just holding myself accountable. You know, I tell everybody, when I play a mini game, it's nice because I'm always the MVP of the mini game and I always win. So there, the sky's the limit with these different things. But when I started looking at it, and I, like this morning, it was a pay period, six o'clock this morning, I was on my scoreboard. I had a few missed expenses that I missed on the travel trip, but no big deal, adjusted that. And just by holding myself accountable and logging into this every time I get paid and seeing where my money's going, then I was able to start looking at where I can cut cost. You know, uh, smoking. I needed to quit smoking for a lot of years. My doctor said it, my mama yelled at me all the time, when you don't put those things down? And I could not do it until I thought, well, let's look at this, because I never wanted to look at how much money I was really spending on smoking. And I looked at it, and I was like, oh my goodness, not to mention the health benefits. And last December, I gave myself the best Christmas gift that I could ever receive, and that Christmas morning, I smoked my last cigarette. And hopefully that'll stay. Like I have no desire or thoughts of wanting to go smoke because I see how much money I've been able to turn that into savings and living a long part of that. I want to be able to enjoy my retirement when I get there, but I couldn't see it when other people were telling me things. But when I spun it in the perspective of the game, it really took a hold. And I was like, yeah, I can do this. So you can do all kinds of crazy things. Uh, down here, maybe. So you can see this is, I'm gonna back this out just a little. Maybe, actually no I'm not. If I quit looking at that screen and do this screen. So we don't need the date. I'm trying to get it, can you guys see that okay? Kinda, sorta, the numbers, as long as you can see the words. Excuse me, so this is my bi-weekly paychecks. I would create my categories car loan, insurance, you know, all those things of being an adult, and put those in there. And then this is where I would throw in a vacation fund, daycare. Daycare is through the roof. I mean, it is extremely difficult for people. So it's like figuring out exactly, that's just part of cost, and putting that in there, and then school supplies. I mean, it's back to school time. I remember what I was like, I'm mom, I need new shoes, I need new pants. I need that new $70 hoodie, you know, them $200 Jordans. I gotta look fly on that first day of school. Looking back on it today, I'm like, I won't even buy myself clothes. I'm like, I don't even care about clothes. Uh, but those are legitimate concerns and costs and things that cost money in our, our families and our lives that we live. And it's so easy to overlook them. Prime example, I had, some, I had to adjust because I was missing $50 a month. Guess where all that was going? I pay $8 for Pandora. $6 for this other app, I pay $18 for Netflix, $12 for Amazon, this much for Hulu. I did not have a budget in there and I couldn't figure out why I'm spending this extra $50, $70 a month, where's it's going? Because the little things add up. And now I look at them and I'm like, okay, so right now I'm in a situation. Maybe you guys can help. Let's take a poll. 
what's the best out of Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon? Because I need to eliminate two of them. Hulu? Okay, Hulu's gone. Amazon or Netflix? See, I have a hard problem because I love Amazon shopping. Get rid of Netflix. But see, Netflix gets you because there's certain series that I really enjoy that are only offered on Netflix. I like the way you guys think. That's my kind of thinking of like, absolutely, if I don't have Amazon Prime, because that's as bad as Facebook. Sometimes uh, my emotions, I like to eat my emotions and I like to spin my emotions. Sometimes I'll watch a uh, very sad movie and close the blinds and set my recliner and have a good cry and order $200 worth of stuff off of Amazon. <laughs> no joke. That is the God's honest truth. And then you feel better. No. <laughs> no. For like, three seconds and then as soon as I hit that I'm like then I spend the next 20 minutes do I cancel it and I I will justify and rationalize everything that I do just ask me it's so okay I got something to work on so these are different things that you can look at and then you know I always like to have spending I don't ever carry cash but I like to ooh, how many people like to go out to eat correct which is what I used to think. And then something happened one day. I got to thinking about this. I like going out to eat. And I also like soda. I love Diet Dr. Pepper. And I started looking at the receipt. $3 for that diluted flat Diet Dr. Pepper that I'm drinking. And I made a commitment a couple years ago. I'm only going to drink water. And it's amazing when we go to a restaurant, $10, I can get a meal. And I'm not, because you add that $3 soda plus and you put in 20% on a tip and things like that. Now let's do the math at the whole family, family of four goes out. Y'all get sodas, it's an extra $12 on your bill. Do that twice a week, $36 a week. Do it 10 times a month. You start adding up the math, I mean, when you think about it, but the thing is, is we gotta bring people in and help them see that. And that may be a good one to start with the kids. Like, hey, I know you love soda, but for $3 I can buy a 12 pack and we'll keep it at home and then that could maybe be a reward to the mini game. But it blew my mind how just cutting the cost, and that is what the great game has done for me. I'm constantly looking at things differently with a new perspective of, yeah, like, because I'm so easy to go like, I work really hard, I deserve a diet, Dr. Pepper. So something to think about, and this is just the pay periods, and each week I go through, and I guess you probably want to know why, and explain a little more here. So then the reason I have these, and I'm gonna back this out, and I know it's gonna be hard to see. So then each pay period, I go through, and I take this, and I move it to its proper space up here. Sometimes something happens, and I need to adjust a few things. The one thing that I try not to adjust is the savings. I always try to do that, but I take these pay periods, so I forecast every pay period. I know what's coming out, I know the day it's coming in, I know what day I need to set, and I take it from this line item, and I put it in its space in there, and then when the bills come due, I take the money out of its line item, and it's all budgeted, and I stay a month ahead of everything. So I'm constantly having, like right now, what month are we in? September, so September's paid for, I'm already, so next week paycheck will be going towards October. And when I do that, it allows me to see where I have extra money to move around. Maybe it's into savings, maybe it's into those new Air Jordans that the child needs, situations like that. And it's simple. I mean, it's not, you could get a lot more creative than this, but that's all for that I made in an Excel school. Yes? Uh, so just to clarify, like for rent for July, it's $1,000. So you're kind of breaking it out 500 by 500. Yes, great question. So how many people get paid bi-weekly? How many people get paid weekly? So this is where I had to do the math. Uh, what I would do if I have, say rent is $1,000 a month, I would divide it, if I get paid bi-weekly, I would divide it by proper amount of weeks, or if I'm getting four period, pay periods in the month and I'm getting paid weekly, and then I take it out of each check. So every check is a little bit taken out, put into that budget, a little more next week, a little more, and then when it's time to pay that bill, I'm not trying to take 
two thirds of my paycheck to pay the mortgage or the insurance. I'm doing it each week and then when it gets moved up into its proper line item there, it doesn't get touched until it's paid. Like those are my non-negotiables. I know I cannot pull money out of those accounts. So great question. And did you have one back there? Start small, dream big. Now, I can only speak for me because I, I'm an individual that's myself. Like I play it with myself and I'm high intense involvement of everything. But I started with just, the simplest mini game that I started with was I wanted $500 in my savings account for six months. And then I play another one. And then before you knew it, I thought, well, this one's kind of a little bit smaller than this one and I slowly started adding more. So like right now, I've got a lot, a lot of stuff going on but I've been playing the game in my personal life for the past four years now. So this wasn't something, that is a great question and actually a good comment to think about. Start small, build something fun, maybe focus more on the creative side and the engagement of the family of bringing them in and, and maybe ask them some ideas. Like after you build one, ask them some ideas, create a list or maybe even put a board up on the wall that says, Hey guys, here's our mini game list ideas. If you think of something, write it down. Let them be part of it. But yeah, I would recommend start small. Try one out. Do a 30 day mini game with the family, whether it's the trash or uh, y'all we're ready, getting ready to get that white stuff on the driveway. And I refuse to pay. Actually, I got a landlord that scoops my driveway and was my yard. So that's I don't miss it. Sean. So, and this is the thing is maybe before the mini game, think about the critical number. Maybe you want a critical number for six months and you have three mini games that you want to play to get that critical number. And you think, you know, sit down and go through the steps to define that critical number, whatever it may be, and then look at designing some mini games through it. Uh, and then you could sit, roll out a session of we're going to do this one this month, this one the next month, things like that. So having that critical number, which is how everything is stemmed off of for me, of having those critical numbers that went from savings to debt to health to buying a house, a 401k. So I do, I'm running short on time. I'm gonna jump over here because I also wanna show you this here. But we're gonna start with this one here. This is just a simple bar chart. So let me ask you guys a question. This is hard to see, but this one here is carbs. What do you see down here, the key? I know it's hard to read, but blue is my goal and orange is my actual. Hey, y'all think I'm doing on carbs? <laughs> right? But this is a clear, easy way to see for me if I'm winning or if I'm losing. So every time I look at this, I'm like, Ugh. Uh, my kryptonite is sugar. I love ice cream. That's so good. But those are things logging that so you can see this was my weight and where I'm at with my goal. And this was taken a month or so ago. I'd have to look back on the dates, but you can kind of see. But then you over here and you look, how am I doing on closing my rings or my three mile time or my hiking, sleeping, this side of things looks pretty good. Like the exercise, so I'm kind of making up for a little bit of here, but I know that I really need to pay a little more attention. This is probably the best one. I've done really good with water. I drink water all the time. Part of that was going out to eat and different things like that. So this is just that you can get way more creative than this, but I'm simple and I'm still learning Excel. So I was like, this took like three hours to figure out how to do this. Uh, then we're going to kick on down to here. So here's one for health. You can see same thing, same concept. On this side, I've got my steps and on this side, I've got my calories. So even though with my carbs, my goal is to run about 16, an average of 1,650 calories throughout it. But then I'm running, I'm 100, I'm 100 or so over, not terrible. I mean, some people are like, dude, how are you eating that little amount and still going? But it's not, what, it's not how much I'm eating, it's what I'm eating that I pay attention to. And then here, the steps, like I set the goal at 14,500 is what I wanted my average to be. 
and my buddy who runs all the time, we're in a competition, and he told me he was averaging 15,000 steps a day. And I was like, guess what? I'm getting you because I'm 400 ahead of you. So we constantly are sharing our information back and forth. And then this one here, I just did for a visual for myself. Uh, let me see if I can fix this to where we can actually see it. Is that a little better on that side? So this is just your basic freshman, eighth grade year, maybe pie chart that they used to show. And you can just see where I'm at and what I'm spending. So spending costs, rent, utilities, and allows me to see that 25% is going to my rent. And I can really start to look at when somebody says, like right now, if you ask me how much money is going to my savings, I'm gonna tell you 32%. How much am I spending on living costs of house and utilities? It's 26%. How much am I spending in stupid money? 15%. Like I know these things and it's amazing because when I go, I can't wait to go start doing the house process and buy a loan and the banker starts asking me questions. Well, where are you at? This, oh no, here, let me just give you this. This will be a lot easier. I can tell you exactly where I'm at. So, but it's a good way to just kind of get a visual. And then I look at different ways of where's the big pie charts that maybe there's some things I can cut out of there. Uh, maybe I don't need to spend near as much on groceries and different things. And then this is just kind of a, I always like to look at a visual of how much money's coming in, how much money's going out, and how much money am I putting in my savings. So with this one that I put together, you can see, I really want this one to start creeping up. And it just gives me a good visual of knowing the things that I can work on and easily tell whether I'm winning or losing in my finances, my health, different things like that. And then I keep, so I keep a running, like Jack is always talking about one year goals, three years goals, five years, 10 years, yes. Oh, gotcha. Uh, so this is where I like to just plan and think ahead. You know, I wanna be able to retire. Now I'm looking at like, well, how soon can I pay my house off and different things like that. And thinking long term, I think honestly, my goal is to be able to in five years have enough money and the savings to if something happens, I can take a full year off of work and live comfortably and everything's paid for. And just getting that thought process of looking down the road and health, huh, I would like to live till, I don't know, the doctor said I probably wouldn't make it past 30, joke's on him, still going. I'd like to at least make it till 80 so I can enjoy a few years after retirement because I started late. So just a different, like an extra sheet to write down some goals. Uh, credit score, this is just a matter of credit karma tracking it, logging it each month. Seven years ago, I had a credit score of like 500 something, and that was something that I needed to improve on. And then I started looking at ways of, well, how can I do this? Different ideas, paying a credit card off every week, not carrying credit card debt, and slowly have been able to build that up. But just tracking it and seeing the trend excites me to pay attention and continue to work through those. Uh, then this is just things that I keep different folders for like critical numbers, scoreboard ideas, mini games. There's not anything on these because those were blank from transferring over. Uh, pay history. I can forecast where I started at clear back when I was 16 to where I'm at now, but where I want to go. And then what do I need to do to get to that point and implementing whether it's more education, certifications, different things. And this is one of the ones, and I think this is based off of, did I do the 70 or 80,000? Okay, I did them both. So this is just kind of a track system of, if I, make a, if I have a $70,000 salary, the percentage that I'm putting in, how many years to live, the total amount that'll break down to per month. So I can see this, so if I retire at the age of 67, making $70,000 a year, and I start putting up to 12% in, and I have 15 years to live afterwards, that is, I think that's 6,000. That's $6,600 a month that I can live off of retirement for 15 years. Or maybe I cut that in half and say, that's $3,200 a month for 30 years I can live. But thinking about that stuff now, and yeah, I, can, I, can I afford to put 12% in my retirement right now? Absolutely not. Like I started with very simple, but that's where when I get the raises and things like that, that goes in retirement, yes. Some are at work, some have been playing the games, and some of them, my friends that 
have been interested because they've seen it work in my life. And I'm like, man, you got to get this book. And then they read the book and they're like, and you know, they don't work for a company. One's a stay at home mom, different things like that. success stories it's the same way that we do everything uh, here I mean that's what started me I had heard people doing this and it dawned on me I had that aha moment that I'm doing very well managing a half million dollar budget at work but I can't manage my checkbook at home and I was understanding the P&L and I'm like I can't even pay my bills on time and it was just a matter of I took what we did at our company and started applying it and looking at it and doing it and then it it happened so guys we're out of time. We have a list. Feel free to snap a picture of some of the things that we've come up with, if you're good with that. Yeah. And then over here, I'm going to apologize because I don't have enough. If you already have, it's just the gig tools from the GGOB and stuff to start critical number scorecards. They're up here. My business card's in there. Feel free to reach out. And lastly, please fill out the uh, yellow cards, the breakout session evaluations. And thank you all so much for being here. And all, as always, reach out and have safe travels home. Thanks. Okay.